Part four of Schubert and his work by Herbert F. Pazer. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Part four The Sketch Symphony and the Unfinished the schubertiades were not invariably indoor affairs in spring and summer they took the shape of longer or shorter excursions jaunts into the suburbs or even farther out into the country with picnicking dancing ball-playing charades and what not if music of one sort or another was needed schubert was always ready to provide it one of the most charming sights of these frolics which sometimes lasted several days was the hamlet of Atzenbrug, an hour or so from Vienna, and it was here that Schubert produced a delightful set of dances, the Altenbrugger Deutsche. It may have been at Altenbrug as well that Schubert composed in August 1821 a symphony in four movements, sketched out but never completed. This is not, of course, the two-movement torso which the world calls the unfinished the sketch symphony in e major with a slow introduction in e minor is unfinished in a different sense the first hundred and ten measures are complete in every detail the rest of the work is carried out only melodically though with bar lines drawn tempi and instrumentation indicated harmonies accompaniment figures and basses inserted and each subject given in full the autograph remained at schubert's death in the keeping of his brother ferdinand who later gave it to mendelssohn whose brother paul presented it to sir george grove he in turn permitted his friend the english composer john francis barnett to complete the work and in this form it was first produced in london in eighteen eighty three only a little over ten years ago the late felix weingartner finished it according to his own lights but in a style far less schubertian than barnett's conscientious piety we have no means of knowing why schubert never bothered to carry out in full so elaborately projected a work nor have we of his failure to complete the immortal unfinished whatever theories may be advanced are purely speculative schubert left large quantities of unfinished work chamber music piano sonatas operas so why not symphonies in some cases he may simply have forgotten certain of his creations as he had a manner of doing in others he may have lost interest for others still lacked time explanations may be plausible yet wholly wide of the mark is the unfinished symphony unfinished because it has only two movements are beethoven's two movement sonatas in any manner unfinished that a hundred and thirty bar fragment of a scherzo exists does not mean we have a right to decide it would have been inferior we have no way whatever of knowing what schubert would have done with a partial sketch for that matter piano sketches of the first and second movements of the unfinished symphony have actually come down to us could we from an examination of them tell what the final product would be like if we were not familiar with it from what we can judge of the sketch symphony its style proves it a bridge between the six early symphonies of schubert and the two later ones we say two were there peradventure three yes if there was indeed a gastein symphony of which nobody has ever found a trace though some serious schubert students have believed and still believe in it many have been confused by the manner that has prevailed for years of numbering the last two of schubert's symphonies the unfinished and the great c major of the heavenly length why is the c major sometimes called the seventh sometimes the ninth the unfinished now the eighth now the seventh in reality the answer is simple in order of composition the sketch symphony is the seventh the unfinished the eighth the c major of eighteen twenty eight the ninth in order of publication the great c major is the seventh the unfinished which was not discovered until eighteen sixty five the eighth the sketch symphony not published till eighteen eighty three the ninth the consequence of leaving the sketch symphony out of one's calculations is obvious however if we maintain that schubert did write a gastein symphony in eighteen twenty five we find ourselves obliged to number that legendary opus nine 
whereupon the c major becomes number ten the unfinished as for the b minor symphony the sweet grief-burdened nostalgic unfinished the fable has prevailed for years that it was written as a thanks offering to the steiermarkscher musikverein of graz which had elected schubert to membership and of which anselm hüttenbrenner was artistic director as a matter of fact the date on the title page of the manuscript is october thirty eighteen twenty two but not till april ten eighteen twenty three was schubert proposed for membership in the society and not till september eighteen twenty three was the composer informed of his election he wrote a letter to graz promising to send the musikverein as a token of his gratitude the score of one of his symphonies but it was not until a year later that prodded by his father who was shocked by the idea that a son of his had waited so long to thank the society worthily he gave josef hüttenbrenner the score of the b minor symphony to deliver to anselm in graz so much for facts we may as well pursue the epic of the unfinished to its close we do not know whether anselm ever showed the symphony to the society and there is no record that he mentioned it to a soul though he is said to have made a piano arrangement of the symphony for his own use not till eighteen sixteen did josef hüttenbrenner speak of it to johann herbeck conductor of the vienna society of the friends of music and five more years were to elapse before herbeck on a visit to graz obtained the score from anselm on the plea of wanting to produce some new works by hüttenbrenner lachner and schubert on december seventeenth eighteen sixty five vienna heard the unfinished for the first time the autograph shows no trace of any dedication to the graz music society or to anybody else but from the start the symphony was acclaimed an undefiled masterpiece end of part four